Ten years ago, I was returning home from a road trip with two friends. I received a phone call from my parents asking when we would be arriving, and I explained that we were around 25 minutes away. About a minute later, we came around a bend. It was a full moon and we could see the reflection from the lake below us and, other than that, the road was completely empty. Suddenly, everything went completely dark in the car. No lights from the dash or gauges or headlights on the road. The music also stopped and restarted at the beginning of the CD we were listening to. There was now a vehicle pulled over by the police about a quarter mile in front of us that hadn't been there a split second before. I assumed I had dozed off for just a second and it was late. I thought it was still quite peculiar though. After about a minute, the driver of the car tuned down the music all the way down and said, Did that just happen to anyone else? The other passenger in the back seat sat forward abruptly and exclaimed, I thought I just fell asleep. We then realised that the clock in the car was reading an hour later than it had a minute before. To keep ourselves from freaking out, we decided that the car had possibly had a momentary electrical failure and reset the clock to an odd time, turned off the dash lights, headlights and gauges and restarted the CD player. But when we arrived home 25 minutes later, we were one hour late. I am missing an hour of my life and to this day, I have no idea how it happened. One time, my wife and I were coming back from a dinner night out. When I opened the door of the house, she was sitting at the computer working, as I usually find her when I get home. Nothing unusual, except she was entering the house with me. I shrugged it off and carried on. We went to bed and I told her that I saw her sitting at the computer. And she goes dead serious and told me that when I opened the door, she saw herself sitting at the computer, working. Creepiest thing I've ever experienced? The fact that our neighbor's two-year-old daughter used to point at the TV when it was off and tell us that the person on the screen was making scary faces and that she wanted it to go away. Didn't help us getting much sleep that night. When I was a teenager, I had two really intense dreams one night. The first one was about an online friend of mine calling me to say she'd broken up with a boyfriend, and I sang a few lines from Seals Don't Cry to her over the phone. The second dream was finding a real life friend's dead body floating in a bathtub. I didn't think anything of it up until I logged online that evening, and my online friends came to tell me her boyfriend broke up with her. Immediately, I asked if I could call her, and she said no. I remember thinking that it meant something, like I could change it. Not long after, my phone rang, and it was my real life friend from the dream calling me. I completely freaked at this point, but talked to her normally. She was just talking about school and stuff, up until I realised I heard a splash in the background. I asked her, are you in the tub? And when she said yes, I felt like my heart had stopped. I asked her, what did you do? She didn't answer me right away, and then after a very long pause, she told me she'd taken an entire bottle of pills and chased it down with mushrooms and vodka. She'd gotten scared waiting for it to hit her, so she called me so she'd hear someone's voice. I hung up and called 911. By the time they got there, she was unconscious, but alive. To this day, she's a mom with a beautiful little girl and she's okay. About four or five years ago, I worked at a Little Caesars Pizza. Usually I would work inside on the pizzas, but we just started up this Monday Madness deal where pizzas were only $4 on a Monday, so we needed someone to advertise. I was a wild and weird metalhead, so I took up the position on Mondays of just going out there, throwing around a sign to get attention, 
and bring people in for pizza. Not exactly glamorous, but I had fun. One day, while I was out there doing my thing, I see a van coming straight at me. It jumps the curb and slams into me, and I feel it crush me against the electrical box, controlling the streetlights. I see a quick flash as the traffic lights flick off, then black out. I gasp, and I'm still on the corner and nothing has happened. No van or anything. Well, I was a little shaken up, so I decided to pack it up and walk back to the store for a break. I walk no more than 15 feet away from the corner when I hear a crash. I look back, and a van just hopped to the curb into the electrical box, and I watch the traffic lights flick off. Needless to say, I took the day off. Still think about that from time to time. I have a sleep tracking app on my phone that has a setting for lucid dreaming. It'll start saying, You are dreaming, repeatedly in a woman's voice with a bit of an echo. I was at work one day when I started hearing the voice randomly every few minutes or so. I checked my phone and as soon as the screen turned, I woke up in my bed as the sun was rising. A bit freaked out, I went to take a shower. Then, on my way to work, I started to hear the voice again through the radio. When I turned my car off, a bit freaked out again, I once more woke up in my bed as the sun was rising. This happened about three or four more times, all at different times of the day. I didn't trust reality for about a week after that and still refused to use that particular setting of the app. I was catching a sky train in one particular city about 15 minutes from where I get off. While I wait, there is a woman with glazed eyes asking people for money. She came up to me, stopped briefly, and then asked, Excuse me, could you spare some money? My brother's in hospital and I'd like some money to buy him some flowers. That's rich, I thought. Drug addicts are getting more and more obvious with their lines. Here's five dollars. Gave it to her without even looking in her face, convinced of her intentions. Anyway, my train pulls up and I get on. I look through the glass at her, walking around, asking others for money, as the train pulls away. The train arrives at the station 15 minutes later, and I walk down and out to the bus stop. There is only one bus in the direction I'm going, and just my luck, it is there waiting when I get off the train. So, on the bus I hop and wait for the bus driver to finish reading his paper before the doors close and we embark down the highway. About five or ten minutes travelling, the driver pulls over for a routine stop. The doors open, and to my complete astonishment, the woman from the sky train walks into the bus, a dozen roses in hand. She looks right at me in the eyes as she walks past to take a seat. How in the blue hell did she get there? I took the train before her. I watched her at the train stop from inside as we pulled away. I went over a river. I caught the first and only bus going this particular direction. And not only did she beat me there, she had time to go to a store and buy a dozen roses. To this day, I have no idea how this happened. Not creepy, but so vivid and distinct that I still think about it years later. I had a subjectively long, involved dream where I was a vendor in a fish market. I remember getting up early, dressing, doing a whole morning routine, going to get tea, heading out to the docks, buying fish, loading them on a cart and going to get ice, and haggling for ice, buying some less fresh fish while I was at it then going to my market to my stall, setting up and selling fish all day. It was so real. I talked to friends, smoked nasty cigarettes, haggled customers, ate lunch, had tea and just lived through the day. At the end of the day, I cleaned up, 
counted my cash, paid the store rent, went home, cooked some of the fish I hadn't sold, sling with some veggies and rice that I traded for, I drank more tea, relaxed for a while, then drew a hot bath, soaked and smoked some more cigs, then went to bed. The next morning, I woke up refreshed, ready to go down to the docks to buy some fresh catch, except I was in my house, next to my wife. Truck parked outside and it was Saturday, no work. My wife and I were getting geared up to go skiing in Oregon and the car was already packed. Weird thing was, in the dream, I was single and a smoker, which I'm not. And the whole long dream had been in fluent Chinese. The effortless kind of fluency that only comes from a lifetime of speaking it. Oh, and I had been Chinese. I'm a big, hairy, white dude, somewhat fluent in Spanish, and I know a little bit of Russian, but it was just weird. I've never worked in a fish market. I wonder who I was. I wonder what I was. I was heading home with my dad. We stopped at a drive through I started feeling more and more anxious for no reason, to the point where it made me lightheaded and sick to my stomach. We had to wait a little bit ahead because they gave us the wrong order, so I sat there, feeling like crap, and suddenly had an urge to call my brother. He was trying to call us, he was in a car accident. No one died, some got seriously bruised, he was only shaken. I told him to shut up and get as far away from the car as possible. He didn't understand but followed through, trying to call some of his buddies, and I could hear them calling him a wuss, him giving up and getting far and then a loud noise, people shouting. After the whole ordeal was over, he told me what happened. His drunk friend tried to impress some girls in the car, hit the gas, drifted, and hit the bottom of the car on some rocks completely messed the engine. They stood near the car, the driver still inside trying to turn the engine back on. The hood burst into flames and the car started to burn fast. The driver managed to get away but got severely hurt. Some of the guys and girls who stood around were hurt and burned too, but not as bad as the driver. My brother was the only one with light bruises from the whole thing. He told me that when I ordered him to get away from the car, he was right in front of it, inches from the hood. I never experienced anything like this before and after, just this once. It's just a weird memory. I remember it like watching a movie and seeing myself and everything from an outside angle. It happened in early 2000 when I was working at a juvenile detention centre in a small town in Oklahoma as a corrections officer. I was working nights at the time and went to work at 9pm. This one night when I arrived to work, my supervisor looked confused and asked me what I was doing there. I said, I work tonight. And he said, but you called in a few hours ago saying you were sick. I was a bit confused and said, it must have been someone else and they got the message wrong. After everyone else showed up for work that night, it was a bit more weird, but we carried on as usual and assigned everyone their places for the night. I went to work in the control room where I usually work. The control room is in the center of the prison that has direct control over the cameras, doors, phones and everything. After I relieved the guard on duty and settled in for the night, I looked at the message that said I called in. It said that I had called at 6.50 and said that I had gotten sick while out cleaning up after the storm. There had been a storm the night before and it was pretty bad, but not anything that I had to go up and... but not anything that I had to go out to clean up. It was truly weird. The supervisor came into the control about that time. 
He was also a friend of mine outside of work, and we started talking about it, and how odd it was. I decided to call my wife at home and tell her about it while he was still sitting there. I picked up the phone and dialed. After two rings, a man picks up the phone and, with a raspy voice, says, Hello? I did not know what to say for a few seconds. I looked at the phone to make sure I dialed the right number, and I had. After a few seconds, the person said, Hello? Again in the same raspy voice, and I said, Hello, who is this? This is Tyler, who is this? The person said. My head started spinning because my name is Tyler also. I said in an almost scream, Where is Anne? He said, Anne's in bed, who is this? I dropped the phone and told my supervisor to ring me out. I had to get home, and I took off towards the door. I could hear Dave pick up the phone behind me and say, Hello? Followed soon after by, What the hell? Rather loudly. I ran to my car and drove home faster than what was legal, my mind racing the entire time. I bust through the door and my wife was sitting, watching TV, and was shocked at me being home. I asked her who was there and she said no one has been here. After a rather long talk with my wife, I went to call the prison to tell them what was going on but the phone was dead. I went back to work and when I came in, Dave was acting weird and he asked me, how the hell are you doing this? He told me that when I left, he picked up the phone and the person on the other end sounded like me. He kind of freaked out and hung up the phone. A minute later, he could see my car leaving the parking lot. I had called back from home and asked what the hell was going on. He said that I was a bit irate and said I was sick and did not feel like playing these games and was telling him to stop prank calling me and hung up. After convincing him I had no idea what was going on, we went back to work. Later, I found out that the phone line for my area had been knocked down the night before by the storm. This is absolutely the strangest thing that has ever happened to me.